up guys welcome back today we're gonna do another sit down video um, about endurance riding because the season is coming up and a lot of you guys have had questions in the comments and have requested a video like this just sitting down and talking about endurance riding and kind of what it is what it's about and how to do it so I have competed in endurance in the last couple of years and I am completely a beginner as well but I can kind of give you a good insight on what the sport is and what it entails and if you're interested in it how to kind of get started in it it's not a super popular sport um at least in my area it's not extremely popular so I'm assuming like in most midwestern areas it's not um real popular but I think it's definitely gaining popularity around here um, with the amount of people that um, are more interested in trail riding. So I actually don't even really compete in endurance. I compete in limited distance riding. So I have the Cambridge Dictionary pulled up here on my iPad. So I'm going to read you the definition of endurance and what is endurance. So Endurance riding is the sport or activity of taking part in horse races over long distances, usually from 50 to 100 miles. So um, endurance is kind of like the umbrella term for the sport, but technically actual endurance riding doesn't start until 50 miles. So 50 miles and up, you can consider yourself an endurance rider. They refer to the smaller distances as distance riding or limited distance so i compete in 12s and 25s so i'm a distance rider um but endurance is kind of what the generalized term is so yeah locally at the the events that i've been at they have offered like a 12 mile novice ride which is obviously the shortest distance and it's kind of for like the beginners the people that are just getting into it a 25 um, a 50 and a hundred um, 30 mile races are pretty common and I have heard of 150s but I I think they're pretty uncommon and these endurance rides or these distance rides take place out generally in big campgrounds big state parks and stuff like that and they are long trail rides basically they are different from competitive trail rides that is a different I don't know if it's necessarily considered a different sport but it's definitely a different event and has different um, rules and regulations so limited distance and endurance are um, timed events they are um, there is limits on the time so like in the 25 mile race that I did it was um, you had to be on your horse ready to go at 5 a.m. and you had six hours to complete the race so it is a race but honestly it's it's really it's not that competitive like the whole the whole community is just not that competitive it's ride your own ride and do what's best for you and your horse so I, I mean I wouldn't consider it a really intense type of race but you had six hours to complete the 25 miles so um, wherever you fell in the placing is just kind of you just had the six hours so I also did I did a 12 mile last year and it was two and a half hours you had to complete the the race and if you if you finish outside the time I think you still got like a particip participation like um, recognition or whatever but like you didn't I don't think you didn't get a prize or anything like that so you can definitely still do it if you're not like looking to um, really be competitive at it you can definitely still um, go and just ride your own ride and if you finish within the time period awesome if you don't that's fine too yeah and I have been to parks where it's like complete really hard difficult terrain where it's up and down and it's rocky and there's water crossings and then there's also parks that I've been to that have really wide um, beginner friendly trails they have flat they have hills they have prairies so it kind of just depends where you're going and what park you're going to um, but that's where the rides are gonna take place out in the woods and if you can get a good mix then then those are really the best rides when there's kind of a mix of all different trains 
Okay, so a lot of people, like in my personal life, when I tell people that I do, I compete in limited distance and endurance, um, ask me all kinds of questions. So like, what do I ride? Um, you know, what does it entail? How do you train? So, and they ask if, if they can do it with their horse. And so what I'm gonna tell you is that if your horse is healthy, if they're sound, um, if they're willing, you know, endurance is definitely an intense sport. And so it's not for every horse. It's not probably for your 28 year old, um, super arthritic navicular horse. <laughs> like there's nothing wrong with those horses, but it is definitely a taxing and very, um, intense sport on the horse's body. I mean, you're going 25 miles. So, um, my horses, really i don't have a horse that wouldn't be a candidate for it all of my horses are completely healthy they don't have any like health issues um they're all sound they're not they don't like go lame during certain parts of the year um and really i use my horse bb because she is has always been a goer she loves to go she loves to work she's very adventurous and so she's the one i picked to do it with because i know that she has the personality and is willing to do it um, a lot of people use their Arabians and their saddlebreds and those horses that are actually built to do stuff like that. Um, but you can use any horse, like any, there's horses of all different shapes and sizes at these endurance rides. I mean, there's, there's ponies, there's mules and donkeys, there's horses, there's all the breeds. And that's the really cool thing about the sport is that it's very, very diverse and literally everybody shows up to these rides with no, it doesn't matter what you're riding. As long as your horse can do it, then, then they're, you're there. Basically, you're definitely going to mostly run into, um, like the Arabians and the saddlebreds and those those breeds that are built to be athletic and like Arabians come from that part of the world where it's hot and it's and there's miles and miles of desert and that type of thing. So they're they're literally built um, and bred to be able to do um, sports like endurance. They've got the big nostrils, the big lungs. They are light boned and they can carry themselves extremely well through a lot of different terrain and for long periods of time. So, um, so yeah, you're going to see a lot of those breeds, but, um, there is absolutely no requirement or no, um, stigma, I guess, on what horse you can use and whatnot. You'll also see a lot of gated breeds. Um, a lot of people prefer to ride gated breeds because like, especially when you're going like 25 or 50 miles on a horse like it is a nice ride to just have a smooth gated horse that covers a lot of ground they have a really big stride and those horses tend to do really well also another question that i get a lot i actually just got this question asked to me this morning at work is what i ride in like what type of tack what saddle do you ride in for endurance and i'm going to tell you guys you can ride in literally anything you want that is uh, that is so nice. That's such a cool part of endurance because like in different s equestrian sports, like there's certain rules of like what tack you're allowed to use and like, you know, based on the age of your horse or whatever you're showing in. And that's not endurance at all. Like you can literally use whatever works for your horse and you. So Personally, I, I rode last year in a Western saddle. The year before that, I used my English saddle. And so really, it doesn't matter. I, I liked my English saddle because it was lightweight. Um, the pads are thinner, so there's um, more exposed back of your horse to obviously release more sweat. Um, my Western saddle is super comfortable for me, but it's also bigger, heavier. It covers more area of her back. The pad is thicker, but... It, it really doesn't matter as long as you and your horse can, can handle it. Um, you can ride in whatever you want. I ride bitless. Lots of people ride in bits. Um, it, does, it, it really doesn't matter. You can ride in whatever works for you. A large discussion of um, kind of your tack and equipment for endurance is boots and shoes. So you absolutely do not have to ride in shoes. Um, if your horse does better in shoes, you can, you can shoe your horse, you can do barefoot. Um, and a lot, a lot, a lot of people, um, invest in boots. So if you haven't heard of boots before, I really hadn't heard of them until I got into endurance and they're like a huge thing in endurance. 
um, our boots. So boots are completely removable shoes for your horse. They go over the entire hoof. They're literally a little boot that you put over top of your horse's hoof and, and they're, they're totally removable. So you can take them off when you're not riding. And that way, if you have a horse that's like a little bit sensitive to rocks or um, gets thrushed really easily in the mud, you can invest in boots to completely cover that. Um, and it also helps like the wear and tear on horses hooves that are doing long distances like that. So I have a couple pairs here that I bought. I bought these secondhand. Um, they're really not used um, hard because I, I think they were the wrong size for the lady or something. But I have two different kinds here. These are the Easy Boot gloves and they look like this. They came with a little pamphlet here called the Easy Boot Glove. And it kind of shows you like how to trim, how to measure what size um, and your warranty on them and whatever. So this is the Easy Boot Glove. It goes on the horse's hoof and then wraps around their pastern in there. Um, this is a size half, 0.5. So BB has really small feet. So um, each uh, brand of boot kind of has their own way to measure um, what size your horse is. So if you're looking to invest in a type of boot for your horse, you'll want to kind of research the different ones and figure out how to measure for your horse. So that's the Easy Boot glove. Um, and then I also have this pair. And by the way, I haven't tried either one of these yet, so <clears throat> I can't really report on which one I prefer. These ones are a little bit dirty, but um, they are kind of a different style. They're really dirty, actually. Holy cow. Um, same concept. Oh my gosh, come on. But um, these ones are cable-based, so... You have it here. This is the part that wraps around the horse's pastern. And then this lever here has different settings to where you can tighten it at. And then when it's on the hoof, you pull it tight like this and it tightens these cables around the horse's hoof to secure it. So um, these ones are the, these are the Easy Boot Epics. Um, I'm sorry, the lighting is not great over here. But these are the Easy Boot Epics, so I will have to try these. I think they are size zero. So these ones are a little bit smaller than these. Um, and so I'll have to see kind of which one fits BB the best. But also, I mean, I wouldn't mind having an extra size in case her feet are a little bit long. Um, these might still work. Some of the more popular brands of boots are Scoot Boots. Um, a lot of people love their scoot boots and renegades are a really popular one that I hear a lot. And then the easy boots I hear of a lot as well. So um, you kind of have to research and just try out whichever ones work the best for your horse. It's, it's really a trial and error type of thing with boots. There's a lot of learning curve to it. Um, I will say the only downfall of boots is that they are removable. So once in a while um, you could lose one. And that really sucks when you're on a ride and you're 50 miles from the freaking campsite and your horse loses a boot and you don't realize it till you get back. So you're kind of out of luck there. Okay, next topic is um, how to train and prepare. So training for endurance really is not as complicated as it sounds. I mean, you're doing a distance race. So same thing if, you, if, if a human is running a marathon, the only way to train for a marathon is to run like the only way to train for an endurance ride is to ride just ride and ride and ride and ride some more so um i am going to be getting bb back into our training routine pretty soon because the nice weather is coming back finally but um generally i would try to ride her once or twice a week and just gradually increase our distance if i'm looking to do a 25 this year then i'll probably start small at the beginning of the year with like five to eight miles and then gradually work up um, as I go. And you can go to, I mean, trail riding parks and you can train there. You can, I, I ride down my gravel road. I mean, a lot of, a lot of us just ride down the gravel road um, 
and yeah, you just have to ride. Just keep riding all the time. And um, you'd actually be surprised, like BB sits all winter long. I don't do a lot of riding in the winter. And you'd be surprised on how much stamina she still keeps over the winter. So a lot of horses, even if they've been sitting for a few months, can pick up pretty close to where they left off. So, so yeah, to train, you just, you ride and you ride a lot. Um, BB also, she gets, um, electrolytes when we're at the event she gets she might get electrolytes like the day before and at the event but electrolytes are one of those other whole nother um, topics I could do a whole video sometime about electrolytes if you guys are interested in that but there is a ton to learn about them and how to use them and yeah but if you guys are interested I could definitely do another video about electrolytes because there's there's a whole nother learning game to that how does the ride work when you get there? So when you get to an, an endurance ride, it's it's pretty hectic and complicated. Usually most rides will have like um, a meeting before or the night before to kind of go over everything. But the ones that I have been to anyway, you show up the night before to get like checked in and everything and give them your horse's health papers and whatever. Um, and then, like I said, the 25 that I went to, you started riding at 5 a.m. You had to be on your horse, ready to go. The race started at 5 a.m. So the, the ride will start and then, um, so like if you're doing a, t a 12 mile, it's just two and a half hours. So there is no break in between. You just have to be back within the time limit. Um, when I did the 25, it was split into two loops. So the first loop was 15 miles. And then when you did the first loop, you got back to the campsite and they had like this holding period. And that is when you get off your horse, you completely untack your horse. That's your time basically to dump water on your horse, get your horse some grass, get your horse a drink. Um, and you have to cool your horse down within so much time. Um, I think your hold time, at least for me, it was like 40 minutes or 45 minutes. So in that 45 minute time, you had to go to the vet and there's a vet on site at all of these rides and they will check your horse over and they have to pass the vet check. If, um, if your horse doesn't pass the vet check, they won't let you go back out to the second loop and you'll be disqualified. So basically you'll get pulled from the race. Um, at the end of the 40 minutes, if your horse goes and checks over with the vet perfectly good, go, good to go back out, you'll go back out. And then the last loop was nine miles. Um, I think it was nine miles, right? Or was it 10? It would have been 10 for a 25. Yeah. I thought it was nine, but maybe, I don't know. I don't remember. But you'll go back out to the second loop. And then when you get back, you also have like so much time for your horse to cool down. So when you're done with the race, you'll go to the vet, they'll check your horse over, and then you have like, I don't even remember what it was, maybe another 45 minutes for your horse to completely cool down. And that's when their heart rate has to come down to a certain point. Um, their skin, like you, they can't be dehydrated. They check a whole bunch of things to make sure your horse is still healthy and sound. You have to do like a trot, you have to do a trot out to make sure your horse isn't lame, etc. And then kind of if you place, you place. If you don't, you get like some participation award or something. I could do a whole nother video about camping with horses, um, but camping is also a giant learning curve. That's what you do at these endurance rides is you camp um, unless they have cabins. But yeah, it's camping. It's camping with horses. You go to these rides with your, your trailer or your tent or your camper or whatever, and you camp um, overnight. So my last topic is the people that do endurance. So who does endurance? Everybody does endurance. There's literally all different people from all different places, all different riding levels. Um, there, you'll see little kids on these ponies at endurance rides. You'll see um, young women like myself. You'll see older women um, that have just started to learn about endurance. You literally see all different types of people. There's big people, there's small people. Um, anybody that's willing to do 25 miles and whose horse can do it, they're there. I want to get into a little bit about the community of endurance because I think it is probably one of the things that drew me to the sport the most is the community for the endurance sport is 
probably the most welcoming, the most nice, the most supportive community of horse people that I have encountered so far. And I've worked at a lot of boarding facilities. I know a lot of horse people that do all different sports from uh, Western pleasure to eventing to dressage to um, barrel racing. And I think the endurance community is the most just g best group of horse people to be around, honestly. Like it is so ride at your own pace, ride your own ride, do what's best for you and your horse. Um, if your horse can do it, do it. It doesn't matter if you're big or small or, or who you are or where you came from or how much money you have. Everybody is just, is just awesome. It's, it's crazy. Like you don't find that very often in a lot of these, um, of these horse sports. It's why I think a lot of people just don't have interest in showing and they just want to have horses because they love horses is because they don't want to deal with the snootiness and the big wigs and, and, and I understand I've dealt with those people and it's not fun. I mean, they make you feel small and they make you feel like you're not, you're not doing it right. You're not on their level, but when you go to these endurance rides, there's literally people with little two horse rusty trailers camping out of tents. And there's people with ginormous uh, 30 foot long living quarter um, trailers being pulled with a semi. All, all people um, and endurance welcomes that. And I think that is the best part about the community. Um, secondly, endurance is largely based on the health of your horse. So that's another thing you don't find very often in a lot of other sports is these horses are getting injected with this and that and they've got these big bits and like you find um, the less morale in the more money spent on these horses and on these competitions. And, um, and I know a lot of nasty trainers whose horses live in a box their entire life because they don't want them to get stained. They don't want them to get scraped. Um, and, and it's not like that. It is so largely about the horse. And if your horse is limping at the vet check, if she's favoring a leg, if um, she's uneven, then they'll pull you. They won't let you continue to do the race because it's it's a hard sport to do. It's a lot for horses. So um, if your horse shows up sore, they won't let you go back out. If your horse is dehydrated, they won't let you go back out. If, if their heart rate doesn't come down within the 45 minutes you have for the vet check, they won't let you go back out. Your horse cannot do another 10 miles. Um, so it is so largely involved. It is so big into the horse's health and the horse's capabilities. Um, and I think that's, that's a big misconception that people don't realize when they want to hate on endurance riders for making their horses do this is that you literally can't do it. The sport doesn't let you do it unless your horse is capable of it. So um, just take that into mind when, when you see people doing these 100 and 150 miles, like the time and hours and, and days that they have trained for a sport like this. It's, it's insane. So yeah, that's another thing that I really like about the sport is it is completely about the horse. It's not about the rider. It's not about how well the rider can ride or how slow the horse can trot or how, how far they can drop their head. It, it is all about if your horse is healthy, if you're healthy, if you're willing to do that, then show up. All right, guys, I have been talking for quite a while and this video is getting long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this kind of enlightened you on what the sport of endurance is. And um, hopefully you're a little bit interested in it now. I think it's, it's definitely a growing community. So if you guys want more information or videos like this, um, videos like I mentioned about camping, about electrolytes, about boots, um, just let me know down in the comments and I would be so happy to do that. But for now, I'm going to let you guys go and thanks so much for watching. Bye.